Hey there guys, it's Amit and welcome back to DevDreamer. So as we continue our CSS tutorial then, let's now move on to looking at the different ways in which we can actually select our HTML elements. So the next few lessons, we're going to be focusing on really understanding how we can select our elements and all the different ways in which we can do so. We'll start with simple selectors. So in this lesson, we're going to be going over the simple ways in which we can select our elements. These are also sometimes called basic selectors. So let's begin. So the first one we have is the basic element selector. Okay, where we just simply select our element by the actual element type. The next one we have is an ID selector. So as you can see, this paragraph element here has an ID attribute of ID. Now, just on a side note, you can actually call this whatever you want, uh, but just, just calling it ID here. And then we also have a class selector here with a class of class. Again, you can name this whatever you like. And finally, we have another class selector with the same class. And this is just some, uh, some dummy text. Okay, so this is what we have rendered out onto the screen. So now let's go into our CSS file and actually style these. So let's go over to our style.css. Okay, so let's first select our element selector here by using the element or type selector. So in this case then here we have a paragraph element. So we can just do P space curly braces and then in here we can actually specify the styles for our paragraph element. So here I'm just going to say, uh, let's give it a color of orange red let's say font weight bold and finally let's say font family Arial like so. Now you may have noticed something strange here all we want to do was select the paragraph element that said element selector in it but actually all of these have been selected and all these styles here have been applied to all our paragraph elements well, if we think about it, this actually makes sense. Remember, all these are, after all, paragraph elements also. So if we go back to our HTML file, this paragraph element here with an ID of ID is still a paragraph element. And so are these class-based paragraph elements as well. So in our style sheet, when we selected the paragraph element here, we selected all paragraph elements. Let's now look at styling the ID selector. So down here, we can select our ID by simply saying hashtag and then the name of our ID. So in this case, we had our name set as ID right here. So we just say hashtag ID space curly braces. And now what we're doing is we are focusing and selecting just this paragraph element here, the one that says ID selector, okay? Because in our HTML element, sorry, our HTML file, the only paragraph element that has an ID of ID is this one here that says ID selector. So let's go over here and now let's style this. We can just say, let's give it a different color. We'll say color. Let's say forest green and let's change the font family to let's go for monospace. Okay, now as you can see, then in the browser window, only this paragraph element here has been styled. So, in this way, then using ID, we can actually single out elements and give them unique styling. Now, just a quick word on the ID selector here you should only ever have one occurrence of a given ID name. So, for example, let's go back to our HTML file. There should be no other element on this page that has an ID of ID as well. Okay, so you only ever use a given ID name once throughout your entire HTML document. Now, of course, we could actually have a different ID here. So we could say, um, I don't know, let's go H1 and just say different ID. And over here, we can specify ID equals, I don't know, H1 ID. Okay, this will be absolutely fine. We can do this. What we can't do though is we can't say, ID equals ID again, because now what you've got is you've got two instances of the same ID. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Now you might say, well, what happens if you do want to style more than one element with the exact same styles? Well, that brings us nicely onto the class selector, because that's exactly what it's used for. The class selector is used to style multiple elements with the same styles. Now, if you do want to learn more about IDs and classes, then check out the lesson on IDs and classes in our HTML tutorial, for which I'll leave a link in the description box below. Okay, so let's now take a look at how to style our class elements. So we have a class of class here on um, both of these paragraph elements, which are just these two here, this one and this one. So let's now look at styling that. So go to our style sheet. And here then, the way that we select class is we do a full stop. So we do full stop and then the name of the class. So the name of this class here, one that we want to style is called class, okay? So we do full stop class space, curly braces, and then in here we can define our styles. So here then let's just say a uh, different color, we'll do color, dodger blue, dodger blue, we'll do uh, font weight, 
let's go 400 um, and then let's say font size 12 pixels okay so we made it smaller so as you can see then this styling has been applied to these two paragraph elements here because these two paragraph elements had a class attribute of class and so if you ever want to style multiple elements in the same way that is when you can use the class attribute on each of those elements and then you can style them all in one go like so okay guys so that pretty much wraps it up when it comes to simple selectors there is one more i want to share with you which is called the uh, all or universal selector so let's go back to our style sheet now the universal selector as you can probably guess by its name is actually used to style all our elements on the screen so here the way that we select everything is by doing an asterisk okay and in space curly braces and then here we define our styles as normal so here then let's say we want all of our text to have the same font family so here then let's just say font family and let's say Arial. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to get rid of the font family from here. And let's also, in fact, let's leave this on here because this actually shows you something called specificity. So whilst we have defined font family Arial for everything on our elements, if we delve in deeper to each selector here, we can actually override this by providing something else. So for example, here in our ID, although everything has been given a font family of Arial, in our ID, we have a font family of monospace, and that keeps its styles, as you can see here. Okay, this still has a font family of monospace. But the all selector is mainly used for CSS resets. So, for example, when we look at um, the box model in CSS, and again, don't worry if you don't know what that is, we will look at that in more detail later on. But you can come here and we can say margin, zero pixels, padding, zero pixels. Okay, and as you can see now, things have actually changed here on our screen. And that's because by default, the browser window already has margin and padding applied to it. Now, I don't expect you to know what margin and padding is if you're a beginner to CSS, and that's absolutely fine, because like I said, we will look at all that in more detail a bit later on. But that's essentially what the all selector is used for. It's used to apply some universal styling to all our elements. In fact, here we can just say text align center, and now everything has been aligned into the center. Okay guys, so that was the simple selectors in CSS. In the next lesson, we're gonna move on to selecting elements by their attributes. It's gonna be super cool, Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.